All right, so we're the VT Athletics capstone team. My name's Tyler. This is Matt. Tess? All right, so I'm Tyler. This is Matt. And Pat and Oscar weren't able to come today. Next slide. So just to introduce you guys to our advisors, uh, the first. <laughs> All right, so the first being Danny White. Uh, he's one of the associate athletic directors here at Virginia Tech. Uh, we have bi-weekly meetings with him, and he's been able to connect us to a lot of great people. Uh, Jay Winkler, obviously you guys know Jay. Uh, he's been very involved with our project and has been a huge help. Uh, third, David Teagarden. Uh, he's our faculty advisor, also been a great help. And Corey Jez, which is our connection to the outside world. Uh, currently the director of analytics for Austin FC and used to work with the Utah Jazz. So the first thing we wanted to do when we were tasked with this project is figure out what Virginia Tech is doing with analytics right now and what some of our competitors might be doing. So we were able to sit down and meet with Ryan Nato from basketball, uh, Ryan Fecto and Kyle Saracen from baseball, uh, Brian Jackson from football sports science, uh, Jake Shell from football performance analytics, uh, Grant Duncan from Hokie Club, and Ron Dixon, Kelly Murphy from strength and conditioning for the sports that aren't football or basketball. Uh, Allison Onion from Nutrition, and lastly, Leigh from Notre Dame. Uh, she's an associate athletic director involved with analytics. Uh, she was hired on to focus more on the revenue side of analytics in the athletic department, but she actually just made a hire of another athletic director about a month ago that's going to be more involved with the in-game analytics. So that's exciting for Notre Dame. It's great to find out what they're doing and apply that to us. And so, of course, we weren't able to meet with a representative from every team here at Virginia Tech, so we decided to send out a survey and at least get a feel for what some teams are doing. Uh, we broke it into three tiers, low, medium, and high. On the low tier, we have men's tennis and men's and women's swim and dive. In medium, we have the golf programs, softball, and the soccer programs. And in high, we have football, men's basketball, baseball, and volleyball actually does a lot with analytics. Pass on to Matt now. So after meeting with these teams, we saw a value in building out a centralized analytics uh, capability for improved sports performance. Currently, there's schools using analytics for revenue generation purposes, but we don't see them using it for improved sports performance at the department level. And so getting into some of the main applications of uh, analytics for sports imp uh, improved sports performance, we have player acquisition. So how can we use data and analytics to recruit uh, undervalued talent and bring them to Virginia Tech. Uh, time savings, so an analytics capability would provide our coaches with um, streamlined reports and insights that they're currently building by hand, allowing them to spend more time on the field coaching their players and less time building these reports. Game strategy, so how can we use data and analytics to better prepare for our opponents as well as make better decisions in games? And then finally, how can we use data and, and analytics to better develop our players and make them better on the field? So moving on to our analytics solution, uh, we, we decided that we wanted to uh, create a proof of concept that would show the value and the realm of what's possible for sports analytics at Virginia Tech. And we did this by focusing on the Virginia Tech football team, specifically sports science data. So currently they're using Stat Sports, um, which is a software that um, is worn on a player's chest and it tracks heart rate and some other metrics. And so we collected this data from uh, the director of sports science with the football team, and we built out a dashboard that serves as a proof of concept, like I said, to show the value of sports analytics. Um, and this is, this is really focusing on a player's fitness. And so coaches would interface with this uh, dashboard by selecting a shirt number here, and then it would drop down um, all the numbers of the, of the players, and they would be able to select a player and see the data related to that player. So here we have Cole Blaker, one of our favorite players on the football team. Um, so just going through some of these metrics, we have dynamic stress load, um, which is a fatigue index. So coaches could use this to track a player's fatigue from one session to the next. In the top right, we have high metabolic load distance, which is a intensity index. So a coach could use this to ensure a player is reaching a certain level of intensity, but not being overworked. In the bottom left, we have high stress running, which is the total distance a player covers above 5.5 meters per second, which is considered to be a hard sprint. And so a coach could use this to ensure that a player is not sprinting too much before a game. And in the bottom right, we have step balance, which shows a coach the proportion of weight a player is putting on their right and their left leg. And so if they see a spike to 60% on a player's right leg, that might mean that their left leg is injured and they're trying to keep weight off of it. And so they should really check in with that player and make sure they're healthy. 
Getting into the enterprise analytics solution, kind of the macro look at analytics at Virginia Tech, um, each of our teams collect data from external data sources. And so this would be then stored in a centralized database. And we'd have data, data analysts who would then build out reports based on what coaches are interested in and different metrics. And then our coaches would easily interface with this um, and wouldn't have to spend time building out these reports themselves. Getting into the benefits of an investment in sports analytics, um, we had to understand, you know, what is the return on investment here? And really it's our teams winning more games. And so to understand that return on investment, we have to understand what a win is worth. And so we did this by looking at a Harvard Business School study where they looked at 117 division one schools across uh, an 11 year period. And these teams had both football and basketball programs and they tracked their success in terms of wins as well as their revenue across this period. And through some statistical calculation, they determined that one NCAA football win is worth about $3.5 million worth of revenue. And one NCAA basketball win is worth $337,000 worth of revenue. And so while there's other benefits that fall uh, under a capability of analytics at Virginia Tech, ultimately we wanna help our teams to win more games. Yeah, so like Matt said, all of our benefits really do tie into winning as much as possible. Okay, so the first being increased revenue. If we add one college football win in a given season, add an 8% increase, that's a 3% increase in revenue right there. That can come in the form of ticket sales, concession sales, merchandise sales, or donations to the athletic department. Uh, second would be time savings. So we really want our coaches helping these players get better, develop, and then perform better. We want an analytics department feeding these coaches solutions that they might be able to take advantage of. Uh, third, less injuries. There's a negative 0.5 correlation between NFL injured reserve appearances and winning percentage. So in sports and especially football, staying healthy is super important. And when our athletes do get hurt, then we want to get them on the field quickly, but only when they're ready so we can avoid re-aggravation. Uh, fourth, improved recruiting. Just having an analytics capability can be a big difference maker for somebody that's choosing between Virginia Tech or a comparable school. And then lastly, the development of athletes. And this ties back into the time savings a lot. We want these athletes getting better, working with the coaches, performing better, getting more professional opportunities, which is great for the reputation of Virginia Tech, which is gonna lead to more money coming in, which is gonna lead to more winning. And that's really the theme of all of these benefits. So some of the costs of our proposed solution at the top of the food chain here would be an analytics director. Uh, working below the analytics director, we think it'd be a good idea to hire three or four assistant directors. So this could be like a web developer, a data engineer, an analysis specialist. And working with the assistant directors, we think it would be a great idea to take advantage of the strong talent pool we have at Virginia Tech and hire undergraduate interns and graduate assistants. And then there's other costs that are quite variable at this point, includes things like PP&E, equipment, consulting, tech, data buys, and those kinds of things. So now I'll pass it off to Matt to wrap us up with the conclusion. Thanks, Tyler. So ultimately, the main goal of a sports analytics capability at Virginia Tech is to provide our coaches with better information that allows them to make better decisions that leads to more wins. And analytics is really driving the way that coaches and front offices make decisions at the professional level. And we see this trickle down into college sports has already begun. So it's important for Virginia Tech to act now to uh, be a leader of the pack in terms of sports analytics, as well as gain a strong competitive advantage over our opponents. As we commit more resources and individuals to sports analytics, we'll discover patterns and trends that will change the way that we make decisions at Virginia Tech. And so an investment in sports analytics is more than just an investment in short-term benefits, but an investment in long-term success for our programs. That being said, we appreciate your time and listening to us uh, talk about our project, and we're happy to answer any questions you have about sports analytics. Is it just how one PCs or is this mobile app? I mean, what did y'all research any of those implementations? Yeah, so the way that uh, a centralized department level sports analytics capability would work at Virginia Tech is it, the interface would be built um, by employees. And so we have all of these data streams from, you know, each team probably has three or four. Um, and we didn't really get into this just because it's a shorter presentation. Um, so all of these different ways of collecting data are different softwares that teams are already paying for. And so this would just really be a way of aggregating all that data together. And one of the main benefits that comes with that is 
if you shift using different softwares, uh, currently you lose that data. It goes when you, when you stop paying for it. So if we can house that data, we can ensure that we, we maintain that across many years. So a lot of times they say, you know, it's the most pressure you don't need to put metal paper and you can have some paper. Yeah, so sports isn't completely safe to play on paper. So really what we want here is the analytics department fueling the coaches. Oh, sorry. We want the analytics department providing the coaches with solutions that they can use how they prefer to. We don't want the analytics department telling the coaches what they need to do. It's what they offer. And one thing we found with a lot of these um, teams, whether it was through the survey or meeting with them, is um, some of the non uh, the, the sports that don't generate as much revenue, they're interested in using analytics, but they don't have the resources to invest in it currently. And so by building out a system at the department level, it offers these resources to teams that want to use them, but they just can't uh, budget it currently. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and you bring up WHOOP. Um, the football team's already currently working through um, figuring, how, figuring out how they want to use WHOOP um, you know, to, to understand a player's recovery and, and different things like that. So all of those things can be incorporated in a centralized system. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely very excited about using that. Any other questions?